when you can't carry a purpose-built force multiplier, sometimes an environmental one will do the trick. Thanks to Wilderness Tactical Products for sponsoring today's video. Look for a link in the description for $5 off on the ankle first aid kit that I wear every day. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Christchurch in Great Britain. Here we're going to see an armed robbery where the store clerk ain't having it. Shopkeeper's just manning the register when this guy's gonna pull a big old knife and, and actually look like he got him with the, the, the sheath on the knife. Now our clerk's gonna be able to close the cash drawer here and then he's gonna get this big plastic stool and just go to work on the guy, wail a tune on him there. And, and our, our robber's like, wait, what's going on? That's not how it's supposed to happen. Now he's gonna try to come around the counter here, but what happens according to, to the information in the description is that the clerk climbed the counter when he came around it and ran off and this guy can't get into the register so he's frustrated and he leaves. He's not able to hurt any of the clerks, doesn't get anything that he wants, and this one ends. I gotta admit, I kinda chuckled when he whacked that guy with the stool there. If you like the lessons that you get here every day at Active Self Protection, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss a lesson. Out of this particular one, I wanna think about some lessons about whether you should comply or whether you should resist an armed robber. Secondly, I wanna talk about using environmental weapons to their greatest extent and particularly in an armed robbery, the advantage that the counter offers for the defender. Think about some significant lessons out of this one. Watch how fast it goes down as he pulls out this big old knife when he's got a little bit of distraction and then goes after the clerk to grab a hold of him to stab him. That's how fast it goes down in less than a second, friends. So you're always working from behind from an initiative deficit when you're a self-defender. But thankfully he's able to get away from him a little bit and against a knife-wielding attacker, look at the advantage that the counter provides. Now, if he had a gun, then that advantage completely evaporates and it actually goes in the other direction unless the clerk has a firearm himself. So, but against a knife-wielding attacker, that's a sh very short-range tool. And since he has a very short-range tool, he is able to keep him off of him because the, the counter provides enough space. Now, that was, I mean, a little thoughtful that he was able to drop the register. I personally don't care about that. But he's, he grabs this stool. And why does this stool such an advantage? Because it has a longer range than the knife. And range is really everything when it comes to defensive weapons, first and foremost, right? So a firearm has a functionally infinite range, and this stool has a little longer range than the knife that the guy has. So he can mitigate that by negating the range in a couple of ways, but it does give him an advantage even over a knife, and he uses that very well, although it does take a lot more room to operate because he has to swing it. Now, I love that he kept thinking, and when the guy came around here, he didn't think, okay, I gotta go and defeat this guy. He said, nope, I gotta escape from the danger zone. And so he climbed over the counter. Friends, excellent strategy there. Get out of the danger zone. Don't fight the guy if you don't have to. Use the improvised tools at your discretion. Use the counter effectively and cover your ass.